Good morning. Thanks so much for being here on the final week of the summer Devo. It's been awesome walking through the word together um, every morning. And uh, I say the final week because next week's next week's begins 21 days of prayer. So um, that was the goal that we would do this up to 21 days of prayer. And hey, we may do we may do something like this afterward. And if you'd like uh, for obviously it wouldn't be called the summer Devo, but if you'd like to continue this uh, daily Bible study, um, let me know. I, I'd love to. I'd love to hear about it. And it's been a whole. It's been a lot of fun uh, walking through the Word together. Um, what a day yesterday! We just uh, so just. I'm still amazed by what God did yesterday uh, among us as we were um, just. There was such a powerful just move of God's Spirit and His presence yesterday. I'm so thankful. And so why don't you put it in the comments what the Lord did in your heart yesterday, whether you were in the room or watching online, and let's just celebrate together. Also, put your name in the comments, put a prayer request in the comments, and um, let's let's dig into the Word together um, on this Monday morning. We're just continuing on in the book of Ephesians. We're in chapter 4, and I want to title this devotion today, Change Your Wor- Words change your world change your words change your world here's what the apostle paul says do not let unwholesome and he describes this is the amplified translation it um, just kind of amplifies uh, the words it says don't let any unwholesome foul profane worthless vulgar words ever come out of your mouth so he's talking to us today about our words but only such speech as is good for building up others according to the need and the occasion so that it will be a blessing to those who hear you speak uh i just see some things here in just this beginning of this passage um he's talking to us about our words and here's just some ideas um that your words affect you notice what he knows what he's saying here that um that that we can have words that are profane, worthless, and vulgar. We can't just think that um, we have to first begin to realize that what we're saying it's affecting our lives. It's it's if we're trash is coming out. We have it's our words are affecting our own our own selves. It's affecting us. Our words affect us. Um, secondly, our words affect others. Um, think about. Uh, the words that have been spoken over your life that have affected your life. Um, if you haven't been through freedom yet, I would encourage everybody to be through in a freedom group. We start new freedom groups at the um, end of next month, at the end of August, as we launch our our fall small groups. Um, but there's a whole week all about the words that we speak, and the words have been spoken over us. And uh, be, uh, words have such power, the power of life and death. And, and what we're saying affects our coworkers. It affects our kids. Our words um, affect others. And lastly, something that I, I had not thought of before reading this scripture is that our words affect God. You say, what do you mean by that, Brandon? Well, let me show you the next verse. It says, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God but seek to please him. I've heard that phrase and I've even used that phrase. Don't, you know, don't grieve the Holy Spirit, but I had never attached it to the words that I spoke. And one of the ways that we can grieve the Holy Spirit, affect God, hurt the heart of God is choosing to be foul, profane, um, using our words to speak death over other people. It says that 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 grieves the Holy Spirit. Um, It says, but seek to please him. By whom you were sealed and marked, branded as God's own for the day of redemption. The final deliverance from the consequences of sin. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor. He's describing what happens whenever we're speaking death, whenever the outcry of our life, whenever we're um, always having to say something negative, where we're always complaining, we're always full of strife. Um, you know, we're, we're the person that has nothing good to say. All we can see is the one thing that's negative. I don't know if that's maybe a struggle for you. I, I, that 
I can get in that mode so easily where instead of noticing the 99 good things, I, I walk into a room and I notice the one thing that's wrong. Instead of being thankful, I'm being critical. And he's describing perpetual animosity, resentment, strife, fault finding, and slander be put away from you along with every kind of malice. What's malice? All spitefulness, verbal abuse, um, and malevolence. All of these things, uh, malevolence, all, all of these things in our lives are, are part of the words that we're saying, the words that we're speaking. It says, but be kind and helpful to one another. Tenderhearted, compassionate, understanding, forgiving one another readily and freely, just as God in Christ also forgave you. I have a question this morning. How, how, how are you doing with your words? Um, how are you doing with your words? Let's get really practical with those closest to you, with your family. How are you treating your spouse? How are you treating your kids? How are you treating your parents? How are you treating the people closest to you? What I found it is easier to say kind words to complete strangers, to people at Starbucks, to people that we just see uh, walking by, um, than it is to speak kind words over our our family, speak kind words over uh, the people in our world, our neighbors, our the people closest to us. And God's challenging us this morning to use our words to be kind and helpful tender-hearted, compassionate, understanding, and forgiving. Maybe today you're holding on to some bitterness. You're holding on to some, to some anger today. It's time to let it go. And let's let God change us from the inside out. Let's let God change our world by changing our words today. It's a challenge. Just for today, here's a challenge. Um, ask God for help with your words. Maybe this is something you really struggle with. It begins by saying, God, Help me. Help me today. Help me today with the words that I speak. I realize I've made some mistakes. Maybe if you have any guilt over things that you've said maybe to your kids or you've said to other people in your world, you've said to your you have guilt over that and you think, oh man, I felt like I created a negative situation by the words that I spoke. If that's you, go to God and say, God, help me. And I, I promise you, he will. He will. And secondly, ask for people to help you with your words. So if this is something you struggle with, get some people in your life. Talk to your small group. Talk to people in your world. Talk to some friends. Talk to your family and say, hey, you know what? I was praying today and I felt like I need to work on my words. Can you help me? Can you help show can you help kind of call it out a little bit whenever I'm getting I'm getting more negative? And get some people around you to walk with you and to help you on this journey. Here's the third challenge. Be slow to speak today and quick to listen. <laughs> this is hard because I'm usually whenever someone is speaking, I'm already thinking of what I'm going to say. <laughs> usually I'll interrupt. I've been convicted by this lately because I'll if someone says, Hey, I'm I'm from so and so, instead of letting them finish their I'm from I'm from I'm from somewhere. Instead of letting them finish where they came from, I'm I'm automatically jumping in and asking them another question. I'm 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 already formulating what I'm going to ask next, what I'm going to say next. And the scripture says we need to be quick to listen and slow to speak. So let that be a challenge today. Let's be slow to speak today. Let's be quick to listen. Let's let people finish their statements. Let's don't formulate what we're going to say. Let's let let's be listeners today and not be all about what we can say and what we can fix every situation. Here's the last and final challenge. Use your words to encourage the people in your world today. God has given unbelievable power in your mouth in the words that you speak. Let's let this Monday morning, July 26th, be a challenge to say, God, is there anybody in my world that I can encourage today? Use me to be an encouragement. To somebody today. Just speak a word of life. It, text a word of life. Make a phone call. Send an email. Let's be encouragers today and let's change our words and what we'll find, it'll change our world. Let's pray together this morning. 
Lord, we thank you so much for your power. Thank you, God, that you are patient with us, Lord. And we confess this morning that words, it's its hard for us sometimes to align our words um, with your heart, with what you're doing in our lives. So we say, Lord, forgive us. Help us to be um, men and women that speak life today, God. Help us to be full of grace today, God. Help us be encouragers today. I say, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, help us. Help us, God, to, um, to, to, to hear uh, your voice and to be able to encourage others, God. To see people through the eyes of faith. To see people the way you see people. Use us today, God. Help us to change our, our words and change Use it to change our world. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us here this morning on the Summer Devo, the final week. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Be planning. Next um, next Sunday starts 21 days of prayer. And then Monday morning, get ready, 6 a.m. This coming Monday morning, we have our first prayer service. And that's Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. And that'll, that'll be streamed online as well for those that can't be here. And then also Saturday morning at 9, next Saturday. Um, it's going to be awesome. 21 days of prayer. Get ready for it. I hope you have an amazing day. We'll see you next week. God bless you, City Hills.